Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Leo Shele. I'm the president of Chemi Aqua Science. Welcome to today's webinar. The COVID-19 pandemic posted some unprecedented challenges to our lives. Countries have taken different actions to confine the spread of the disease, which also ended up with certain disruptions to the operations of the aquaculture industry. On the one hand, aquaculture is a very local business in which farmers, feed producers, and logistics companies all run their operations locally. On the other hand, aquaculture is a global business because very often people who consume our products are sitting on the other side of the world. What are the main events that have changed the status quo of our industry in the past few months? And what are the trends that are happening today which might become tomorrow's new normal? We have assembled a team of professionals today to share with you our thoughts and observations. To start with, it's my pleasure to invite my colleague, Dr. Suguma, Regional Director, South Asia of Chemi Aqua Science, to deliver his presentation. Sugu, over to you. Sugu, you need to unmute your mic. Please, thank you. Greeting to all. Thank you for joining our webinar today. My name is Sugumar. I am with Kemin for more than 12 years, now taking a charge for Kemin Aquascience business in India and other South Asian countries. Everyone is aware. Everyone is aware that COVID-19 has impacted our regular life and especially aquaculture industry is finding a difficult time running the business. So Kemin Aquascience team tirelessly put effort contacting different sources and collected a lot of information to share with you to give a overall picture of the industry in 2020, year of 2020. So today I am going to give you an overview of Indian shrimp industry, especially in the 2020 period. For the benefit of the international audience, I would like to give a brief introduction about Indian shrimp industry for 2019 so that they can compare what's happening in 2020, the quarter one. In 2019, India produced more than 800,000 metric ton of shrimp. And many of my colleagues in India know very well, in the early 2019, we were affected by major diseases in shrimp and the winter crop was heavily impacted. So, but after the first quarter, India has rebounded with all the strategies in place and end of the 2019, they stand as the world top exporter of shrimp by recording more than 667,000 metric ton export around the globe. So this was supported with more than 350 approved shrimp export companies and six cold storage facilities across the country. And last year, India produced 71 billion seeds through more than 360 hatcheries. From the feed side, India recorded more than 1.2 million metric ton of feed produced by more than 30 feed companies in India. Regarding the farming area concern, India has blessed with 
a long coastal line. So we have more than 176,000 hectares of farming land for aquaculture. Out of that, 91% is Venami, 80% is Tiger, and less than 1% is Campy. So this is brief about the Indian shrimp industry. Let us move to the 2020. For your easy understanding, we have put the slide deck to give you details by segment. Hatcheries, farming, then feed manufacturing, and what's happening in exports, and then what is the way look forward. Hatcheries. All the registered hatcheries in, in the country is are importing the brood stock from 11 approved suppliers from overseas. So in 2020, from January to March, India imported more than 63,000 brood stocks. By end of the March, after the lockdown restrictions, India did not import any brood stock from overseas. So this is a big impact on hatcheries. From January to March, the hatcheries produced 16 billion post larvae. After lockdown, they initially they did not operate, but after one week, they started operating. They have produced approximately 4 billion PL in the April after the lockdown. Based on our best estimate, we found that currently in India, 30% of the farming is in the running culture is going on with different DOCs. So this is the peak seeding, uh, sorry, stocking season for India. Around 70% of the farm ponds are ready for new stocking. Due to uncertainty, we need to find out what will happen in the coming months. We have done a quick estimate out of that new ponds available. If 50% of the ponds opt for new stocking, we need additionally 6 billion seeds. If you calculate backwards, we need another 25,000 brood stocks imported immediately. So which is actually very difficult during this lockdown time because most of the hatcheries are dependent on the cargo flights, which is also very few currently. So, and also the space available in the quarantine facility to do the testing also uh, challenging. So this all challenges make a situation of short supply of the PLs to the farmer who wanted to go for new farming. So this will definitely, there is every possibility for using the farm reared non-SPF brood stocks to produce the seeds to supply the demand, which is eventually lead to crop loss and disease outbreaks and everything, everybody knows that. So finally, this will put the prices for the PL in a situation to increase. So currently there is a slight increase in the PL prices, but if there is a demand, definitely the prices will go up. This slide will give you more idea about the current farming situation. Kemin has done a countrywide survey and found that 30% of the running culture is there. So you can see in the pie diagram how this 30% currently is distributed across the key aquaculture producing markets in India. So actually in February and March, everything looks normal. The customer were preparing for their stocking and we thought everything going in the right direction. 
but there is a small uh, course correction due to the COVID lockdown at the end of the March, and it impacted the PL supply and subsequent stocking and prices also dropped. Thanks to the government of India to ensure that there is a minimum prices for customers that helped to boost the confidence of the customer and also reduced the panic harvesting from the farming side. Let us talk about the shrimp prices. So Indian shrimp prices, as everybody aware, is impacted from the March beginning. And after the lockdown, the prices went down very deep. That is also due to the global shrimp prices under pressure. And there is a trade adjustment between the importing and exporting countries, especially US and China. So India's major market is United States. So currently they are also undergoing the social distancing measures that have an impact on the supply and demand. At the same time, the Chinese markets are showing a signs of recovery. They come out of lockdown and there is a marginal development is happening, but still we need to follow general wait and see approach for the Chinese market. In coming weeks, we can get more clarity on that part. So from this slide, two charts, you can see the prices for smaller counts like 70, 80, 100 counts are better, slightly increasing, and the prices for 30 counts are not, not seeing much improvement because of the international buyers. Let's talk about a brief on the shrimp feed manufacturing segment. From January to March, everything went very well and industry produced more than 350,000 metric ton of shrimp feed. But after the lockdown, they first faced the big challenge is labor availability. Number two is the logistics, getting the raw material from neighboring states. Due to the COVID restrictions, many neighboring state borders were closed. So they faced a tough time. So in April, with our best estimates, the Indian shrimp industry produced close to 80,000 metric ton of feed, which is actually 40% down compared to April 2019. So, but the good news is that the supply chain slowly getting revived with the support of government and the feed demand may fluctuate in the coming months based on the seed supply and the new stocking. This slide will give you a quick overview how the trade flows of shrimp in 2019 happened. So if you see very specifically, India still the largest exporter of shrimp to the world. You can see here, it, it exported more than 600,000 metric ton of shrimp, especially to US and China and Europa. The three countries contribute more than 80% of the export. Let us see how this is happening in the beginning of this year. Approximately 230,000 metric ton of shrimp were produced until March. With our best estimate, India exported out of this 180,000 to many countries. The major export volumes went to US and China. So US got 
more than 73,000 metric ton of shrimp from India and China totally it got 24,000 metric tons. Out of that January and February on an average of 10,000 metric ton. In the March there is a, a dive in the export volume mainly due to the lockdown and other logistics issue. So approximately currently in India more than 25,000 metric ton of shrimp were stored in the cold storage in order to pursue the current orders, current pending orders as well as the future orders from the regular customers. After lockdown, government supported industry a lot. One of the major support is that the Andhra Pradesh government opened the four key ports, Raisa, Kakinada, Krishnapatnam. All these ports helped to resume exports. At the same time, some proportion of the same were sold in the domestic market as well. I personally saw a lot of shrimp in the domestic market when there is uh, less fishes available. And the good news from Japan for the black tiger shrimp segment is that Japan has decided to reduce the sampling frequency for the import inspection so that they can also support the countries during the COVID challenging time. Looking ahead, everybody knows that speculating a future developments is really difficult especially for the demand and supply conditions because the COVID restrictions is still being impacting the countries which is producing the aquaculture produce as well as consuming the aquaculture produce. So we thought these steps would be the best for our industry. The number one is stabilizing the local industry situation is the first and foremost important. So especially availability of labor and logistics should be set right, resolved for proper functioning of the industry. And also the farming community should be supported with finance and security from the government side to boost their confidence and continue the farming. Because in many provinces, the farmers cannot afford to lose even one summer crop. That is their livelihood. For the farmers who want to target in coming months export markets, they can, they can go for low stocking. That would be a promising move. So once the market's coming back to normal, they can, after three to four months, they can able to sustain and sell the product to that demand. If some farmers wants to go for domestic market demand, that also help to ease the current situation. So they will go for smaller counts, 100 counts and 90 counts. Apart from that, we believe every crisis gives you an opportunity. This crisis will open up a new thinking of marketing shrimp, both domestic as well as in the export markets by following certain successful models like National Egg, Egg Coordination Committee. They branded the egg and they support the egg activities, ensure that whenever there is a crisis, they could manage. Similarly, agriculture produce less avocado. And also there are many ideas like targeting the international suppliers like McDonald with, along with the chicken, more shrimp. So there are many integrated, innovative uh, marketing approaches could be evolved during this crisis time. And the last one I want to say is that 
judicious pond and feed management practice is always very important for successful crop especially during the challenging time so this actions would be of great help to support the industry during the challenging time so with this i i stop my presentation we will uh, engage your questions at the end of the all speakers presentation so once again thank you for listening thank you very much thank you dr suguma for a very comprehensive report about india as well as your personal outlook and call for creativity and resilience during the crisis next i'm pleased to introduce our second panelist mr frank ju he's a colleague of mine working for kemin aqua science in china he is the regional director who is broadcasting today from Shanghai, China. Frank, over to you, please. Uh, yes, Leo. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So I am Frank Zhu. <laughs> I'm based in Shanghai. I'm the uh, Kemin Aqua Science China Regional Director. So uh, today I have two parts information to share with the audience. One part is about China aqua demand and the supply. Another is about very specific China stream industry and uh, the impact under the COVID-19. Okay, so first the information, <coughs> just followed by Dr. Shugo's uh, information. Let's talk about uh, China aqua species, uh, the first important thing is dream. So uh, we have several points to share with the audience. Uh, in year 2019, China total consumed stream two and a half million metric ton. And uh, this part is includes China local production is 1.8 million metric ton stream. And also at the meantime, in year 2019, China import 718,000 metric ton from outside of China. And the total value is about 4.4 billion US dollar. When we see the location, we can see that in China, there are, in this map, all the wind province, they are produced streams. So all along the China, East coastal. So this is a, also the uh, production method includes fresh water and also the salt water. And uh, in the uh, year 2019, even the recent coming 10 or 20 years, for the whole China stream industry, what is a major challenge? That is about the survival rate. And uh, just as Dr. Shugo mentioned, pond management or even this kind of thing is all together is about how to increase the survival rate for the stream. In China, the data is about 20 to 30 percent of the survival rate. So how to uh, increase the survival rate is a major task for the feed producer and the farmers. And also we can see that in China, uh, the stream industry business model is a very uh, service focused. So this is means China uh, local big feed producer, they always offer the farm service together with their product. So here the table we can see a map regarding the China production and the import. We can see that around 70% of the China total consumption is supplied by the local production in year 2019 is 1.8 million metric ton. And the biggest import country for China stream is Ecuador. So it's around 0.3 million metric ton. And in last year, this is a 1 billion, 1.8 billion US dollar import in terms of the revenue. And also China imports 0.16 million metric ton stream in a whole year uh, 
last year from Indian, around one billion US dollar. And also we say others is more uh, include Vietnam, Saudi, Indonesia, and uh, some of the South American country. So this take about 0.7 million metric ton in terms of 1.6 billion uh, US dollar. Yeah. Okay, so except the stream, we can see that China is also uh, have quite a lot of uh, aqua production. So we can see that for the marine aqua industry in China, last year, year 2019, uh, total production is 20 million metric ton. Of course, this is include arch. So also, this is a very concentrate with the blue color. This is means around 93% of the marine fish and the ship are very focused in is the cost of the China along this here, the blue color. And also China have a very big uh, fresh water uh, aqua industry. This is located in east and the middle of the China in the green color. So this part is a total about 30 million metric ton. So this is means China total aqua output last year is around 50 million metric ton altogether. And among all the China's province, we can see that Guangdong province is very special. They are big in terms of both fresh water and salt water. And also Guangdong province is the most advanced technology uh, in China. So they know uh, almost all the uh, advanced uh, technical skill to how to fit the fishing and the strip. Okay. Then uh, if look into specific, we can also see that China aqua uh, in terms of the species, we separate into two major parts. One is the uh, traditional common species. So for this part, it take about 60% of the China total output or uh, production. So this is a very focused in east and the middle of the China. So this part, all the species is about cups, grass cups, cereal cups, big head cups, common cups, GBL cups. So uh, the total volume is about 18 million metric ton. Uh, we know that China has a long history uh, for Chinese people to eat the fish. So those kind of species is along in China for uh, many, many years. So people is very uh, uh, familiar with this. And also we can see that for the common uh, traditional species in China, the demand is relatively uh, stable. Uh, even during the COVID-19 uh, period, let's say majorly in China, that means Q1 of this year. The, uh, the demand is also uh, quite reliable, uh, stable because the major reason is this is a major family consumption. And in the Q1, people have less opportunity to go out, to go to the restaurant. They have more time to uh, eat in home and uh, except the uh, pork and the chicken, so fish, uh, consumption have to uh, keep uh, stable. Yeah. And also, uh, we can see that if talking about China traditional common species, even the volume is a very big, 18 million metric ton. Uh, however, this industry competition is very, very hot. So the industry uh, major needs is about cost control and how to save the cost, how to uh, increase the uh, feeds efficiency is the uh, number one task for the whole industry. And uh, if looking forward for the technical trend, uh, extruded feeds to replace the pellet feeds is a major trend. The reason is that uh, the whole industry want to increase the feed uh, efficiency. Yeah, so this is about the uh, common species. And also at the meantime, we have the special uh, species. Special species is just uh, emerging in the recent five years. So previously, because of the uh, aqua skill, so some of the species 
cannot be fed by uh, by people, and it's only wild, so it's uh, uh, expensive. Now uh, people get the skill, and uh, this one is coming uh, can be big uh, volume to rise in the in the farm. So and the relative those kind of special uh, special species uh, unit price is relatively high. Let's say we can see that in East China and the Middle China, we have all spread the special uh, species. This is a major uh, include yellow catfish, snakehead fish, sea bass, and the crab. And also recent years, very, very hot topic is a red swamp crayfish. Uh, we can see some very typical uh, character for the special uh, species. Is that uh, the first point is that the whole market uh, demand is growing very fast. And also because of the good price, so all the farmers and the feed producers, they have the high motivation to, to get into this uh, industry. And uh, this one is not only consumed by family, but also consumed by the restaurant. And I have, uh, yeah. And the third one is that uh, we have to mention about population change. We can see that uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the population change, we see young generation is more like the special species because the reason is that those kind of species, they have less bonds and it's popular in the young generation. And because uh, 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 the old generation, they are okay for the for the for the uh, common species. We we have uh, quite a lot of bonds, uh, and the, um, also for the feed uh, producer, those kind of species uh, special species they need a high quality feeds, uh, and uh, in terms of high protein and high lipids. So all term all the uh, target is to let the fish uh, grow faster, yeah. and. Uh, However, because those kind of thing uh, is uh, consumed, measured by the restaurant, uh, this part is uh, impact by COVID-19 quite heavily versus the uh, common species because people get uh, less uh, uh, opportunity to go to the restaurant. However, uh, if let's see uh, from the long period of view, we see that, uh, we, we will say that uh, in China, the trend is very clear. They will step by step to re replace uh, part of the common species. This is a major because of the population change. Okay, so so after talk about all the common species, uh, special species, and the stream, let's take a, a relook, uh, take a look back about what's happened from January till to now in China uh, for the stream market. So uh, here we have the pricing trend from January to now. And uh, quite popular in China, uh, the, the stream counts is the 60, 80, and 100. Not very big, not very big, but 60 is already relative uh, middle to big size for Chinese people is okay already. And uh, we can see that the price is uh, uh, RMB per kilo. Uh, interesting thing is that uh, this is a big curve that's uh, from high to low and then come up uh, recover again till to now. So if we look into detail in January, we see that uh, oh January end of January is China Lunar New Year and at the meantime because of COVID COVID nineteen is start, so uh, government start to do some uh, 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 policy to control the movement. So this is means nobody go to the uh, go to the restaurant. So the demand is very low. And uh, we can see that in the, uh, from the January to February, the price is getting a supply decrease. Yeah, this is uh, all because of the low demand. And then in the uh, February, the whole February for China uh, uh, aqua industry is very painful. The reason is that plant uh, all the, uh, the whole, uh, the whole industry is a start is very hard to reopen because people have a lot of concern like uh, uh, movement uh, like all of the issues and also because of the uh, hard uh, movement so we meeting also meeting meet with the labor shortage raw material sweeping issue and the supply shortage so this is means even means the industry want to reopen 
you can still hard to find the people to work. You can still hard to find uh, hard to find the uh, raw material to uh, to work with. And also in the whole February, the demand is a very very soft. The whole in the the whole country uh, is, and uh, also we see that the import export were also impacted because every country is concerned to be uh, influenced. So the international uh, exchange is also be uh, be blocked. Yeah, and uh, uh, when we see go to the match from here to here, we can see that uh, a little uh, a little bit good signal is that. Uh, some of the plant is reopened and the people getting more uh, frequent uh, uh, movement because uh, by end of February, uh, seems that the covenant gets some uh, control and the people see some opportunity. And then people can move. Uh, also at the meantime, we can see that actually in the whole Q1, China is uh, uh, economic is very, uh, very painful. We see that the GDP is negative 6.8. This is never happened in the uh, in the history. Yeah. This is because almost for the whole culture, the country is no movement, no economic uh, exchange. Yeah. However, the good thing is that uh, uh, after three months is uh, uh, suffer painful period, when time go to April, we can see that the demand or the price is come is come to recover. And uh, almost uh, uh, most of the uh, industry is in the, uh, especially in the aqua industry, is a full capacity. And the demand part, uh, people going out, starting to work, and uh, the demand is uh, recover step by step. step. And uh, also, we see a good trend of the press up uh, with the gym. What is the reason? Because uh, in the uh, previous, uh, uh, suddenly the demand is getting increased. So the uh, supply of the stream is getting shortage. So accordingly, the price is uh, getting back. Yeah. And we also can see that the farmer's motivation is recovered. Yeah. Uh, another point that I want to echo Dr. Uh, Sugo is that uh, now uh, in China, uh, stream industry, the pond management, water management is extremely important because now the price is good. However, the temperature is also high. This is, means a lot of issue illness come to the water. So now it's, uh, uh, the whole industry is working on how to uh, manage the, the water and the pond. Yeah. Okay. And uh, also uh, regarding the uh, import part, uh, have a little bit uh, share with, uh, with the audience. So basically uh, the imports uh, uh, will keep uh, stable uh, in, the, in the period. I think most of the reason is because say uh, the uh, January, February uh, deliver, most of the uh, time the order was uh, uh, discussed uh, in uh, last year. So this is a uh, continuum. But however, let's say uh, uh, real demand is really impact. And uh, if we look into the import volume uh, from the, uh, for, the, for, the, for the China, from outside of China, we can see that 62,000 metric ton uh, stream uh, import from Ecuador. So Ecuador import is uh, still uh, keep stable. And the 14,000 metric, uh, 14, metric ton import uh, from Indian. Yeah. Uh, then another, the rest was uh, uh, supply from Saudi, uh, Argentina, uh, Thailand, and uh, Vietnam. Okay, so after share so many information, uh, we also have a reflection about the whole uh, period and the worst uh, uh, indication to us. So uh, in summary, we see from the two V, market and the technical. Uh, from the market side, we see that after uh, the, one, uh, the whole principal Q1 period, uh, now most of the feed producer already raised up to, uh, to operation uh, from March. Actually, it's the middle of March. So if Looking at April, so China aqua industry production uh, is in the uh, is already on the normal status, uh, full capacity. Yeah. And the second point is that uh, we have to say that uh, uh, demand was really impacted by COVID nineteen in the first half. Uh, now we see the good signal is recover, but however for the Q one is really lost. Uh, so we do hope. Uh, uh, it will be recovered when people can go to restaurant. Uh, till to now in China, the signal is uh, is uh, 
quite positive. Uh, people can already smoothly to go. Yeah. And uh, also we predict uh, in China, the stream price will be uh, continue strong. This is due to the, uh, let's say, uh, less import cost the uh, supply shortage by the COVID-19. Yeah. And also Dr. Shugo also mentioned that uh, uh, Yindin or even Vinan uh, have a good uh, uh, outlook that the export to China will be also recover when the uh, things is getting better. Uh, the last point regarding the market is that uh, we can see that uh, uh, very interesting. Even the uh, Q1 demand is uh, low, but uh, uh, feed raw material price was increased quite heavily, like a fish meal, like the uh, lipids, like the oil. This is a major uh, because of the unstable supply. And uh, we see that uh, actually in uh, March, China, uh, most of the China feed producer already announced the price increase because they cannot further bear the uh, increased uh, raw material cost. Yeah. And uh, uh, from the technical part, uh, we can see some uh, chain. One is that uh, more and more feed producers are trying to introduce more feed additives into their formulation to support raw material price increase and the is uh, supply issue. They want to use the additives to stable this kind of unpredicted issue. And uh, secondly, uh, just as we said, pond and the water management uh, are very uh, popular or in high demand in China. This is because Q1 slowed down the turnover speed. So quite some of the uh, fish or stream was deposited in the ponds. And the temperature is, uh, is high. Uh, China in Shanghai today is uh, 31 uh, century degree. This is the highest uh, this year. So water is also in the, uh, under the risk. The last point is that we can see that uh, alternative protein resource are under development because of the high face meal cost. So the face meal in China uh, today versus January, this is 40% of the price increase and also the supply shortage. This situation will be extend uh, will be till uh, will be extended to end of June. So, feed producer are very painful. They have to waiting for a long time to get the raw material and pay uh, more money. So they are very eagerly to find some alternative uh, protein. Yeah. So that is all the uh, situation and the uh, reflection regarding the China aqua industry uh, in the end of the uh, COVID-19 uh, period. So thank you for your hearing. Yeah. Thank you very much, Frank, for a comprehensive yeah. story about China being the first one to enter a lockdown and also the first one to gradually move out of a lockdown. I think with uh, the country reopening, uh, the demands will also gradually come back, which is much needed for the aquaculture industry. Thank you for your story. Next, you. I have the pleasure to invite Mr. Nicola Tararico, who is the regional director for Chemi Aqua Science in the area of Europe, Middle East, and North Africa. Nicola has also prepared his presentation with our colleagues in Latin America, which will be also covering the situation over there. Nicola, a very good morning to you and good morning to any attendees who's dialing in from Europe. Thank you, Leo. And uh, thanks to everyone for attending our uh, webinar. As Leo um, already anticipated, I'm going to present the data from my region, but also the one from South America. And I want to also thank Jose Duarte for helping to compiling the data of my presentation. I would like to start with a, a first uh, overview of the uh, aquaculture uh, production in uh, the EMENA region. EMENA, for the people that are not familiar, stay for Europe, Middle East and North Africa. The, and uh, if we look to the total production in the region of about 4.5 million tons of fish, we have two big micro areas. The first one is in the north of Europe, 
especially in Scandinavia. And the second one is in the Mediterranean area with uh, and the North Africa, with Egypt being the biggest player. If we look to the production per species, we see here also a quite clear segmentation with salmon, probably the most produced uh, fish in the region, mainly concentrated in the north of uh, countries, where we can find also production of trout, but trout is also produced in uh, other regions, rich of fresh water, like North Italy, part of France, or part of Turkey. The marine fish are then produced mainly in the Mediterranean area because they require offshore farms in the sea. And looking to shrimps, the uh, main producer is Saudi. Uh, it's uh, with a production that's estimated uh, on uh, 80 to 100,000 metric ton a year. This is uh, represented mainly an intra-regional market. It means that the majority of the production of uh, seafood it remain and is consumed within the uh, countries in uh, Emena. The only exception or significant exception is the salmon that is uh, exported for 50% of the total production worldwide. If we move then now to South America and, uh, uh, and we focus on shrimps, we see here that the main production is in Ecuador. This was already mentioned before by um, uh, Frank, for instance, while talking about China. And Ecuador is producing about 600,000 ton of Vanna May, and this is mainly intended for the export. Looking to the export of shrimps from Ecuador, this is going for the majority of quantities to Asia, with China for sure the big player. And then also part is allocated to Europe and North America. Only a minimal quantity remain for local consumption or in South America, or it's exported in other countries. If we look now to the uh, new era that we are living, we know that we are surely uh, facing uh, different challenges linked to the COVID-19 pandemic worldwide. And if investigating the market and to reading articles, we have seen that there are different the challenges that the uh, fish producers, shrimp producers are facing in the different area. And I would like to focus the attention in, in this my speech on two uh, impact. One is related to the delivery of the products. In fact, especially for fresh products, this is normally, uh, the, these are transported using passenger uh, cargo airplane. However, due to the lockdown and the uh, compl almost complete landing of uh, uh, passenger flight, our uh, partners, uh, producers of fish, uh, are facing today the problem of looking for alternatives on how to deliver their products, especially looking for something that can be cost comparable or cost efficient, because the other alternative way are resulting in a significant increase of cost and automatically high cost impact, the uh, reduced the demand and reduced the sales. This is true in both in the uh, MENA region, as well in Latin America, South America, where in, uh, on top, the reduced demand is also impacting the producer of shrimps with an increased uh, request from dealers of uh, delay the payment terms. The second analysis we have made is related to the um, way fish and shrimps are consumed. And here the market can be split into two uh, completely different segments. The catering, so the consumption at the restaurant, and then the one going to the dealer's market, and it's normally designed for the consumption at home. The scenario here is completely different when we look at the different region or we look and analyze the different products. As a, for instance, if we look to the uh, salmon production and we focus on uh, Europe, this is for 50% consumed locally, so within Europe and the remaining part is exported. Now, 
for the quantity of salmon consumed within Europe, surely we are registering a reduction of consumption in the restaurants because due to the lockdown and the different with different intensity. Uh, when you think about Europe, you need to always to think about that uh, Europe is uh, uh, an agglomeration of countries with different regulations. So the rules on the lockdown are a little bit different in the different countries. But in the majority of the case, majority of the restaurants are closed or they have uh, strongly limitations. So the demand of the salmon from a restaurant is significantly going down. However, there is a, a compensation by an increased consumption of uh, uh, salmon from uh, uh, the market that's going to supply the home consumption. This is probably due to the fact that the salmon is a, an easy uh, products to prepare, to cook, because it's available in already portioned, it's frozen, it's a smoked, so it's very easy to be consumed also at home. Completely different scenario when we think about marine fishes, Sibrim, Sibras are the main one in Amena, or trout. Where normally these fish are consumed as a whole and they are uh, require a little bit higher ability to be uh, prepared or to be uh, cooked. That's make the consumption privileged or preferable in a restaurant while the consumption at home is minimal. The collapse of the demand from the restaurant is significantly impacting the stock quantity available today at the farm level. This is all, uh, even more intense in country that are uh, producing for export, even if within the region, like for instance, Turkey. Another important analysis to look also what's happening outside the region and especially for instance, in one of the market uh, uh, like North America. I didn't include the China because already Frank made a, a good analysis of the region. But if you look to North America and in particular to the United States market, here the seafood are mainly consumed at a restaurant for about 70% of the total yearly consumption. Now, with the lockdown and with the majority of restaurants closed, this is resulting in a significantly reduced demand and consequently export of salmon from Europe or shrimp from Ecuador. All this combination of factors is impacting the price. And one of the uh, uh, parameters or, or the result I was able to find is that today the salmon selling price is going down for amount of 30 Norwegian krone that correspond about to three US dollar per kilo. Finally, in my analysis, uh, I want to focus a little bit more on the uh, situation in Ecuador, where together with the problem of deliveries and the issue linked also with the um, reduced demand from certain market, especially North American market, there is another factor that is impacting the industry. And this is the reduced capacity by processing plant to process enough quantity of shrimp on daily basis. This is mainly due to the implementation of COVID-19 rules on a working environment. With, we know with the higher distance, reduce the number of shift, uh, working shift, uh, and significant impact on availability of labor per hour. Due to all these factors in Ecuador, it was registered a reduced export of uh, shrimps about of 20% in the months of April. And if the situation will not go back to the normality as soon as possible, there are uh, forecasts that this can be increased in the next quarter. With this, I want to thank all the uh, attendees and uh, uh, pass the talk to Leo for the conclusion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nicola. A fantastic story about Amina and Latan, which shows again the aquaculture world is a very connected world for us all together. So we do have the time to take a few questions. So uh, attendees, if you would like to ask any questions, 
you can tap the chat button, which is on the uh, side bar, no, the bottom bar of the uh, Zoom window, and you can type in any question needed. Uh, and then I think let me start taking the first question while uh, you can all think about what questions you are going to ask. There is a question about uh, whether China will produce equal amount of shrimp as last year, or is there a chance for more import from the outside? So I will start taking this question because um, this is very often discussed. When the reopen of the society happens, what is the consumption uh, mostly look, going to look like, okay? So I believe as we now enter the month of May, we will see more countries gradually opening up or are going to discuss about the reopening. Then of course, one big question for the reopening is, uh, is going to be a, what's called a V-shaped recovery of the demands, or is it going to be a air-shaped recovery of the demands? And somebody may tell, well, it's probably an air shape with the horizontal line a little bit towards the upward. So it is a difficult judgment, so to say, but what we know is when the reopen happens, the consumption will return. And how soon and how strong will depending on the situation uh, of each country. What we actually see, the whole pandemic caused by the COVID-19, you can compare this to a, uh, a big pause button on your music player, actually, as you're playing a song, but all of a sudden, this is paused, right? Because it's interrupted the production, the labor, the transportation, the demands. But at certain point of time, somebody will be hitting the resume button again, and the whole music will continue to play. So for the disruption, we hope this will be as little as possible. And certainly with all the countries gradually moving out of lockdown or preparing to move out of the lockdowns, there's the uh, near horizon that the demands will pick up again. Let's see if there are any questions. There is one question about what are the fish meal production status in India? Dr. Sugu, would you like to take this question? Yeah, yes, Leo, that is a very important question. Uh, the COVID impact did not leave fish meal as well. So as per the IFFO data, compared to last year, we have produced only 9,000 metric ton of fish meal. Uh, last year, same period, February, I'm talking, we have produced 15,000 metric ton. So almost more than 40% drop in fish meal production is reported by the IFFO, that is also correct. So that is going to be a, another big challenge for the shrimp feed, feed producers. Okay, thank you, Sugu. Um, I see there's a question about what will be the roles of players like Kemin in reviving the aquaculture operations at all levels, right from hatchery to exports, especially related to the shrimp industry. Um, maybe I take this one to start with and I invite my fellow uh, panelists to add. So at Kemin Aqua Science, uh, we offer solution and service aiming for the entire supply chain of the aquaculture. So we're in terms of um, offering support during this difficult pandemic, actually we do look at a few things to be extremely critical. The first subject is the security of supply. While it's probably very easily said, however, if you consider the situation in different countries with the challenges. Some are unique to do with labor shortage. 
some are really to do with lockdowns and uh, uh, unavailability of logistics. Uh, so security of supply is something uh, we believe of critical importance. And we are very happy that all the Cayman production sites are located in important uh, markets where we are all present with our customers that we will be able to continue supply to all the customers. The other element which is very important is actually the efficiency of feed. In our terms, as the raw material price is likely to go up, uh, there's already a situation in which uh, certain raw materials became a kind of a, a scarcity and then the price has gone up. The efficient use of feed will not be only important for the productivity of the aquaculture, but this also goes directly to the good economics of the farmers. So as a company active in this area, we are providing solutions which help the feed companies as well as the farmers to make the best efficient use of the raw materials. Those are the two things I can think about and I invite uh, my panel, uh, uh, my fellow panelists to add to that. Maybe Nicola, anything you want to add to the uh, reviving question? Yeah, I think uh, Leah, you already covered it completely and explained uh, what is uh, the uh, job at uh, the partnership came in can uh, uh, help. Uh, in terms of services, what we can uh, uh, support you is helping you, for instance, in uh, selecting raw materials. That can be uh, the first thing is jumping to my mind, for instance, Leo. In a moment where uh, availability of uh, some raw material, I'm seeing also different question about uh, the fish meal or alternative proteins. There is where Kemin, uh, uh, you can use Kemin as a partner of your um, uh, solutions to uh, eventually selecting alternative products just to make an example, if we want to move or if we have the requirement because of the low availability to switch from a, a, a marine source of oil to a, a vegetable oil, having a good analysis of the oil and the, how the oil is digested by the fish and how this can be optimized, that's the way Kemin can uh, help um, in a certain way. So that's the first. Uh, comment Thank jumping you. to my mind. Thank you, Nicola. Frank, any thoughts from your side? Uh, yes, uh, Leo, thank you. Uh, I think uh, your answer is already very complete. I just uh, go to a very specific point. I see uh, two questions uh, asking me is about uh, fish meal. So, yeah, here are uh, two questions. One is about uh, what, what is uh, Frank talking about the alternative protein uh, resource? And another is about uh, uh, what, what's it, uh, the China face meal issue is a temporary issue or a continued issue? Right, okay. So uh, here, uh, uh, our answer is that for the, for the face meal issue is uh, for Chinese uh, 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 feed uh, industry is a continued issue. It was the reason because it's unstable. So the formulator is uh, very hesitant to use it a lot because the price is continue up and down and also the supply is not always every year be stable. So uh, formulation uh, producer is looking for uh, some uh, alternative uh, protein uh, resource, especially for the face meal. And uh, uh, regarding the uh, face meal part in China, there are uh, three uh, major technical ways ongoing. Uh, one is that uh, major thinking is about to use the, just as uh, uh, Nicola mentioned, use the plant-based, uh, plant-based, uh, uh, protein or cheaper protein uh, to replace fish meal, like a chicken powder, like uh, even the soy bean, uh, those kind of things. And uh, the key point for this application is about enzyme. So we must use the uh, high efficient enzyme to increase the protein absorption uh, efficiency. And the uh, chemin in China is uh, uh, promoting a uh, uh, liquid uh, spread engine uh, to those kind of things. What's our aim is that to increase the chicken uh, powder to the uh, equal, uh, equal uh, 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 nutrition value of uh, uh, fish meal. Another thing is that uh, uh, China here, uh, the formulator is trying to use uh, from the energy V uh, to get some, uh, some, 
some uh, compensate regarding the protein. The, the overall conception is that uh, we, uh, we will increase the lipid uh, content in the, uh, in the formulation and at the meantime to decrease the protein uh, uh, content. The reason is that uh, uh, some of the protein uh, we eat in is to be uh, supplied energy for the movement of the fish or the stream. But actually from the uh, energy efficiency, uh, lipid is much more high efficiency. So we can use more lipid. However, one of the issue is that the face or stream is very hard to absorb too much more uh, uh, lipid. Let's say if higher than 5% of uh, 7%, for them will be an issue. And here, chemin is promote uh, 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 bio-based uh, uh, emulsify uh, to solve this issue. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, for, for chemin, we are very uh, focused in, uh, in, in China or even all over the world to promote some uh, high technical or uh, new solution to help the industry to facing the issue. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Frank. And Dr. Sugu, anything to add from your side? Uh, I think almost many points covered by my colleagues. There is a one important thing regarding fish meal is everybody knows that this is short supply. So coming months, definitely you will get fish meal, no, no doubt in that. But how to preserve the quality of the fish meal you bought at a higher price? That is very important. Especially uh, India, the summer is coming, picking up. So from the heat, you know, the stabilization of the fish meal is a challenge. So Kemin uh, could help all the fish meal producers and also fish meal consumers uh, with the uh, anti-accident program to make sure that whatever money they put in on fish meal is safe and secure and then take the returns. So that is the commitment from Kevin for a historic time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, for time reasons, uh, we're not able to uh, answer more questions. In the meanwhile, we have noted all the questions and comments posted on the chat room. There are more chats uh, than uh, we can uh, actually follow in short period of time. But thank you for all your comments and your questions. Then to conclude today's webinar, we just want to share a few thoughts from our side. The aquaculture sector being a part of the agriculture sector is probably one of the most robust sectors under the pandemic situation. That is something we should all realize. The aquaculture sector also provides the essential supply of the much needed protein to people, which will always remain needed during the lockdown situation. Something very important for us to realize. And then at the end of the lockdowns, there will be rebounds of the economy and there will be rebounds of the demand we as an industry should be prepared for the reopening with sufficient supply of products when that happens. And we consider, as just briefly mentioned, the efficiency of feed, the health of aquaculture animals, and the security of supply to be the top priorities during these lockdowns. And players along the supply chain should consider how we each play our own roles to sustain the continuation of the supply chain during and beyond the pandemic. And we as Kemi Aqua Science will endeavor to provide solutions in both the feed and farm areas to help our customers and business partners to remain resilient during this crisis. Please join us in a series of webinars from now until the end of June, when we will be having weekly introductions to our products, solutions, as well as sharing thoughts about the agriculture, aquaculture industry. If you are already a customer of Chemi Aqua Science, thank you very much for your business. We are committed to offer secure supply of our products to you during the lockdowns 
and we'll continue to adjust our solutions to satisfy your changing needs in future. Please follow Chemi Aqua Science on LinkedIn, Facebook, and on WeChat. Thank you very much for joining the webinar today and see you next time. Bye-bye.